Hi there. In my February reptile update, I mentioned that I was working on a green tree python cage. Well, this is that project. This video is quite long. I tried to cut it down as much as I could. If you have any questions about it, let me know. But let's get started. The first version of this cage was using an exoterra that was only one and a half foot wide. And I shared some pictures online and asked for advice on it. And I got shot down heavily by the green tree python guys saying that for an adult male this is not nearly big enough. I still think they were wrong but I took their advice and ended up getting a much wider one. So after buying this one I just resold it and went and got a bigger one instead. So this is the big version of the Exoterra that I ended up getting. This one is 90 centimeters wide or three foot. It is a foot and a half deep or 45 centimeters and it is 60 centimeters high or two foot high. The first thing I started doing with this is just going along the edges and making sure they were all sealed. I probably didn't need to do this but because I was going to actually have a proper pond and standing water in there I thought it would be worthwhile just to go along the edges and make sure everything was sealed up. This is done by running a bead of silicone along the edges and then going over it with my finger just to smooth out the edges and cleaning up whatever was left over. When cleaning the silicone, I mainly paid attention to the side that had the pond in. I wasn't too fussed about the other side since it wouldn't really be seen. Here's a quick tip. To stop your silicone drying out or going all hard, you can just shove a screw in the end. You kind of just screw it in there and that stops loads of air getting in and for all going hard. And even if the bit does go hard, when you unscrew it, it seems to unblock itself quite nicely. Once the tank was ready to go, I wanted to have an idea of what the layout was like so I made this diagram and I stuck it on the back so when I started working on it and laying things out I knew what I was looking for. This diagram has most of the bits that shows where I want to put the pump, it shows where I want the branches to go across more or less, it shows where the pond is going to be and the little island and most of the main bits are planned out and the actual the finishing product looks quite similar to this. So with my diagram in mind, I started to trace out the layout of the different parts of the pond side of the tank. This will make it easier when I come to foaming. This little plant part was going to be part of the island in the middle of my pond and I wanted to have something growing out of it. To stick this down, I just put a dab of silicone down and later I came back and just stuck the plant part into place. The first part of the pond that I wanted to get down was a ramp so that if anything fell in it would be able to climb out really easily and that it wouldn't have sheer sides on the edge of the pond. This ramp was going to be made out of basically a stack of stones so to make the first layer I just laid down some silicone and then the big rock that formed the base straight down on that silicone. From there it was pretty much a case of apply more silicone, stack more rocks on top, put silicone on top of those rocks, and repeat the process until the stack was complete. I got this nice little fossil from one of my friends and I thought it'd be really good to have it as part of the pond so when you're looking in from the outside if you're paying attention you can see a little fossil so I thought that'd be pretty good. I laid out the fossil and the rocks around it in the rough pattern that I wanted. I then removed them and put down the silicone to stick them back in place. So that was the main rock part of the pond done. The rest I wanted to have a foundation of foam with rocks on top, but this first bit I wanted to make sure was all rock so that it looked really natural. Then it was time for foaming. With the foaming, I just sprayed the foam down everywhere that I had drawn the outline and doing it layer by layer. It was quite important when using the spray foam to do it one layer at a time, making sure that each layer dries, otherwise you may get the layers collapsing in on each other. So that's the first layer done. I just left it to dry. I made this little time lapse so you can see it expanding and how it hardens. It's crazy how hard this stuff dries. You can see me knocking on it and it's pretty solid. I would recommend waiting until you're sure that it's really really hard before adding the next layer or before attempting to carve it. So once I had three layers on and they had all dried, I started the carving. So at this point it just looks like a massive mess and I wanted to make it fit the outline that I'd already drawn on the floor. So I just got in there with a the knife and started hacking. 
It's really important with this stuff to make sure that you leave it time to dry. In some of the places where it's really thick, it could take much longer. Like here, I pull out this piece and it's still really gooey and gross. And you can see in the background there, some of the pieces have cavities in them. You can avoid that by making smaller layers and waiting for each layer to completely dry before doing it. I was really impatient, so I got lots of gooey bits, but I'll just fix them up later. This is what the pond looked like when I'd finished cutting all that foam away. So to cover the foam that was by the pond, I decided to cover it with rocks. So what I did was put down layers of silicone and then just stuck rocks to it. This is a bit tricky because sometimes when you stick a rock on, it would fall back off again. So sometimes it would require holding it and waiting for the silicone to dry before moving on to the next piece. Once I'd finished covering an area with some rocks, I wanted to put some cocoa fiber over the top so that it wouldn't have shiny bits of silicone sticking out between the rocks. I did this by just taking a handful and smashing it in between the rocks. My original idea was to keep the pond side completely separate from the drainage layer on the other side of this barrier. So to do that, I wanted to silicone it completely to make sure that there were no leaks. I say original idea because it ended up not working very well. When I finished the initial build, the pond leaked into the other side straight away. And after a few months of running it, I found that it was still leaking loads. So I ended up making a different solution. After working on the pond for a bit, I decided to work on the background. I used cork bark for the background, as well as some logs that I found in the woods down the road from my house. And then I brought in the two long pieces of cork bark that were going to be the perches for the green tree python. I measured how much of the cork branch I needed and I cut the rest off using a saw. While fitting them in the tank, I made sure to check that there was enough clearance for the heater. I didn't want to build everything and then find out that the snake was too close to the radiator and would end up getting dried out. I placed the heat in every now and then just to make sure that there was enough clearance. I used old milk bottles and whatever I could find to try and prop the branches in place for when I came to foaming them. The foam worked really well to hold the branches in place. So once they were foamed in, I could take out the milk bottles and everything else and carry on with the rest of the build. So I put all the rest of the logs back in place, which took me quite a while. And then I got ready for foaming them in place. When firming the background, what I wanted to do is just fill up the space between them, making sure to get as close to the bottom of each of the logs, so that it would be enough to hold them in place, but I didn't want to completely cover them with foam. Once I'd finished firming in the background, I left it to dry, and then carved it down a bit since it obviously expanded more than I needed. I then coated everything in silicone, which was very, very messy. I recommend if you're doing this to use old clothing that you don't mind getting ruined, because this stuff gets everywhere. Once I'd covered everything in silicone, I just threw huge amounts of cocoa fiber on top of the silicone, pressed it down, and waited for it to dry. For the waterfall, I did it in the same way that I did the rest of the pond. I put down silicone first, and then just placed rocks everywhere to fill in the gaps. I let everything dry overnight, and I tipped the tank back up and let the excess cocoa fiber just fall down. I then used a vacuum cleaner to try and get everything up that I couldn't get with a dustpan and brush. Something I didn't mention earlier is that I had run some PVC conduit underneath the background and I had done this so that I could run the cable for the pump up behind everything. I used the conduit so it would be much easier to replace the pump if anything ever went wrong. So here I am passing the cable for the pump up through the conduit. I'm grabbing it out of the top of the conduit, feeding it all the way through so that the pump can sit underneath. I decided to try and put the pump on a bit of foam to help with reducing rub vibrations. This seemed to work well over the past six months of having it this way. I've not had any issues. Occasionally the pump gets clogged, but all I have to do is reach in there and move the debris away from the front of the pump, and usually it's good to go. I switched on the waterfall, and it all seemed to be working as intended, which was a massive relief. The waterfall looked quite good. It took a bit of tweaking at the top to get the flow just right, once I'd got it right, it looked really good. The water flows down the waterfall, along towards the front of the tank, around the front of the tank, and then back towards the pump. Unfortunately, despite my best efforts, there were some leaks. So here you can see some water leaking out of the barrier between the two sides. I ended up draining the pond and fixing this leak, but it didn't fix it long term. The leak ended up coming back and I had to make a different solution long term, but I'll cover that in a different video. 
With the pond side mostly sorted, I then turned to the other side which is the drainage layer. I decided to use these clay pellets because I had used them already for aquaponics and knew where to get them fairly cheap locally. I filled the section up with clay balls until I was happy with the depth. To stop soil getting down into the clay balls, I added this weed barrier layer. This layer is just normal weed cloth that you can get from the local hardware shop. I ordered this on eBay. The idea is that you use it to separate out the dirt from the drainage layer so the water can still drain through but it keeps the dirt out. For my substrate, I use four main components. Orchid bark, sphagnum moss, cocoa fiber, and leaf litter. I got the leaf litter from some woods down the road from my house. Do yourself a favor and don't pay for leaf litter. Always see people buying it online. Just go and get some. Most people live near woods or forests or something like that. So for bioactive substrate, most people would recommend the ABG mix. I didn't have all the ingredients for that, so I just kind of winged it. I started out with some soil and some leaf litter that I'd gotten from the woods. And then I added six cups of cocoa fiber. I also added two cups of sphagnum moss and three cups of orchid bark. I mixed them all in thoroughly. And once they'd all been mixed, I put them inside the vivarium on top of the weed cloth. The next task was to plant out the vivarium. Some of the plants I had bought, like the bromeliads, and some of them, like these, were ones that I'd picked up for free from the woods near my house. When planting them, I wasn't particularly careful. I just pulled them out of their pots and plugged them in wherever I could find space for them. Once the planting was done, I tried to cover up the bits of bare soil with some leaf litter that was left over. In order for the substrate to be bioactive, I needed to add some custodians. The custodians live in the soil and help to break up organic matter and turn things over. So if there's any snake poo or any dead plants or anything, they should help eat that up and convert it into nutrients for the plants to grow from. The custodians that I had were some springtails and some isopods. The isopods I have were tropical wood lice. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. The video might seem a bit rushed, so I'm expecting loads of questions. If there's enough questions, I could always do a follow up video and one including all the lessons that I've learned trying to maintain this over the last six months. So feel free to leave some comments and stuff and I look forward to hearing back from you. Thanks guys.